Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are going to be looking at the structure of the cochlea as well as how we hear. Now this video is an update to the previous existing video that is in my grade 12 playlist. This one I have refined down and I've updated so that it's more relevant for the exams that we are writing now. Now if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you have any questions about the ear or any other biological topics, don't forget to put a comment below and I will reply to you and I might even make a video answering one of your questions. Now first things first, we need to orientate ourselves with the cochlea and where exactly it is. Now what we have in front of us here is the entire inner ear structure. And so that means we're in the final section of your ear, we're all the way in the actual skull itself. And when we refer to the cochlea, we are referring to this snail shelled structure over here. And so what I want you to actually imagine is this little section here that I've cut off, that over there is a separate structure which we will deal with in another video which is called the vestibular apparatus and that is the section of your ear that is responsible for your balance and your posture but we'll cover that in another video. The cochlea on the other hand is a snail shell structure that is wound in on itself and I'm going to elaborate how exactly it looks on the inside and how it actually allows you to hear. Now once you've finished watching this video and you want to go practice your knowledge, I suggest you go over to the website studyclicks.co.za. There you can sign up simply with an email and you can select the subjects that you have chosen to study. Now one of my favorite features of StudyClix is going to have to be their library of past paper questions. They have solved your problem in where you are always looking for multiple questions on topics, but you had to go to many different papers just to find them. They have put all the questions in one place and better yet, they have filled it with memos. And not just memos with the answers, but top teacher tips as well. Better yet, they have also told you why certain answers are wrong, where you're going to get the marks allocated to, and it really makes the difference when it comes to getting that distinction. My next favorite thing about Study Clicks is going to have to be their flashcards. They are well written, they are in line with the guidelines, and they cover all the content quickly and efficiently. Now, if you want access to all of the quizzes and flashcards, then you're going to have to upgrade your account, but I have good news for you. You see, when you want to upgrade from the basic package to the plus package, you can use my code ANGLER100 for a hundred rand off your subscription. All you need to do is click the link in the comment section below, put in ANGLER100 and you get 100 rand off and access to the study clicks for the rest of the year. Now let's get back into learning about the cochlea and the root sound will take as it moves from the middle ear into the inner ear. Now up until this point we know that sound has traveled along the canal, it has hit the tympanic membrane, it has then converted sound waves into mechanical movement via the ossicles. Now the ossicles are going to knock against the oval window, which is this structure over here, and it's like a membrane. It's kind of like beating on a drum. Now, where does this go? Where do these um, waves or mechanical movement go? It's going to go into the cochlea, and what they've done in this picture is they've taken the cochlea here and they've laid it out flat. Remember, the cochlea is like a snail shell. And if we flatten it out, it's going to appear like a long tube that is divided down the middle into two halves. Now, why is that? Well, let's get back to the oval window to figure it out. At the oval window, the final ossicle is bumping against it and it's creating pressure waves in the fluid that fills the cochlea. Now, that fluid is called perilymph. 
And essentially what's happening is each time this final bone in the ossicle knocks against the oval window, it is creating these um, pressure waves. And they're going to move through the cochlea. And they're going to move through the top half or the top tunnel of the cochlea. And they're going to be heard. They're going to be received. But I'm going to get to that just now. Any waves that are not heard or received by a receptor, they're going to go all the way to the end of the tunnel and they're going to go back the way they came, this time on the underside. And they're going to leave out of the round window. Now the reason for that is we don't want any ringing in the ears or a better way to think of it is we don't want any echoing. If sound is entering into the cochlea, we want it to enter in one place and exit in a separate place. If it didn't and the cochlea was blocked off, let's say there wasn't a round window, this was solid, you would end up having sound waves going down the cochlea all the way around bouncing off the back and then having to come back up again. And that'd be problematic because you would hear sounds over and over again. Now I mentioned to you that there is a place in the cochlea that you're going to hear these sounds as we move down the cochlea. Now what we have here is the organ of corti. But first, let's position ourselves from the previous picture. In the previous diagram, we had the cochlea which had been laid out flat and long, and it had been divided into a top area and a bottom area. I want you to now imagine that we have taken that uh, long longitudinal section and we've now cut it. And what you can see in the diagram here is a cross section with the top canal sitting here, the bottom canal sitting here, and this central region or this central section over here this bit over here is that dividing line that ran down the middle. Now to simplify this a little bit more because I know that this is the part that really gets us a lot. I just want you to know that you are not going to have to know the names of these canals. You are not going to have to know the names of these membranes that are vibrating and moving. All you're going to need to know is that in the cochlea the organ of corti is the receptor. That is the thing that you are hearing with. So as those pressure waves move through the perilymph, so they're moving, just let's remember, through this upper canal over here, they are going to stimulate the organ of corti that is sitting just below. And so what exactly is the organ of corti? So here we have zoomed in on a section of it. Now the organ of corti has a membrane on the top here and it has some hair cells and they are, as you can see, attached to one another. As that membrane vibrates backwards and forwards because of those pressure waves in the perilymph, you are going to convert those pressure waves into an impulse. And that's what's really important in your explanation where you state your pressure waves... are converted into an impulse. That's really important because a lot of metrics don't make this, um, this clarity in their answers. They just simply say the sound waves move through the cochlea, they stimulate the organ of corti, and the organ of corti um, hears the sound. It's really important for you to show how things have changed, how pressure waves are converted into impulses, and those impulses are then sent through to the auditory or auditory nerve. And that nerve goes to your brain where you hear it in your cerebrum. So if we were to summarize that in a kind of flow diagram, I would go along with something where I would start off with the ossicles in the ear. I would then go through to the oval window. From the oval window, the sound is going to travel via the cochlea. In the cochlea, we have the organ of corti. And let's not forget the organ of corti is where we are going to convert pressure waves in the um, perilymph 
we're going to convert those pressure waves into an impulse, right? That impulse is then sent to the auditory nerve. Now, the auditory nerve is going to take that impulse and it's going to send it to its final destination, which is going to be the cerebrum. Now, in a lot of textbooks, or maybe in your textbook or notes, sometimes it'll say it'll go to the temporal lobe or it'll go into the cerebral cortex. That is all correct. You can put those answers as well. It's just that sometimes some textbooks give you more detail. But I would say that the cerebrum is the most basic, most straightforward answer, just in case you haven't covered any lobes before in class, or if you've never really worked with the word cerebral cortex, cerebrum is a nice, simple one to use to remember. Now, as always, I like to finish off this section with a terminology recap. You can use these words for flashcards, and it's really important to use these words when you are doing your explanations, your long processes. First of all, we looked at the cochlea, which, remember, is the organ in the inner ear that is used to actually hear. It's shaped like a snail shell. And that particular snail shell is filled with perilymph. That is the liquid that's moving. And that is moving because the ossicles have created a pressure wave that is moving through it. Now that pressure wave needs to be heard by someone, needs to be interpreted or received. And that brings us to the organ of corti. The organ of corti is the receptor in your cochlea. That is the actual structure that is converting those pressure waves in the perilymph into an impulse. So that impulse can be sent via the auditory nerve and the auditory nerve is going to take that impulse to your brain so you can perceive and hear sounds. Now if you like this video everybody don't forget to give it a thumbs up and remember if you have any questions please place them below and don't forget to put your notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Also keep your eyes out for our live lessons as we prepare for prelims and finals. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.